This week, we've got another incredible story of resilience to share with you guys. So last week, we heard about Douglas Bader, which was quite up and in your face and unavoidable resilience. This week, it's gonna be a little bit more subtle, but the whole idea of, of the story this week is really showing you an organization of incredible people who let their actions do their talking. They just kept moving forward, kept being positive, kept going and made a huge difference. So this week we're gonna talk about the incredible ladies of the Air Transport Auxiliary, otherwise known as the ATA. Now a question that I'm regularly asked when I'm working in schools is were there any female Battle of Britain pilots? And the answer to that question is no, there weren't, but there were female pilots in the organization that we're about to talk about. Now their job, the job of the ATA, was to deliver and ferry the aircraft from the factories to the airfields. They did an incredibly important job and of the 1,326 pilots who flew with the Air Transport Auxiliary, 168 were women and that alone is quite remarkable for its era. There was a real cross section of people who flew for the ATA, both men and women, and some of the old guard in there called themselves the Ancient and Tattered Airmen Society. But the real advantage to an ATA pilot was they had to fly so many different aircraft. If you think about it, a Battle of Britain pilot, for example, would fly a Spitfire, a Hurricane, or something similar. A pilot who flew for the ATA would have to jump into a huge bomber, maybe a Wellington, deliver that, pick up a Hurricane, drop that off at the factory, maybe pick up a Defiant, a Defiant and drop that off. They, could, they were expected to fly so many different types of aircraft and it made them incredibly gifted pilots. Just for a second, imagine the challenges that these ladies faced. Not only were they way out of their comfort zone, learning a new skill that only a fraction of the population of people could do, but they were confronted with so much sexism that it was almost outrageous. Inequality was rife for this period in British history, and what these women did was actually quite incredible. They let their actions do all the talking. So as the men went off to fight and these opportunities opened up, women came out of the home and into the workplace, and they were incredible, as they were always going to be. And at the spearhead of this were these incredible women who learned to fly and do their duty at a time when it was needed the most. So we have this collection of 168 young aviatrixes um, doing incredible things, becoming incredibly gifted pilots. But just because they were airborne doesn't mean they were yet on equal terms. In 1940, they were being paid 20% less than their male, male counterparts, despite the fact they were doing the same job. Incredible ladies like Amy Johnson, Jackie Mogridge, and the incredible Mary Ellis rising day in, day out, doing their duty. A story that I absolutely adore about Mary Ellis was she was delivering a Wellington bomber, this huge aircraft that normally had a crew of five people, and she was flying it and delivering it alone. Now she came into land, she made a perfect landing, and she jumped down from the aircraft and walked off to the crew room. She was just five foot two inches. Now the ground crew who were gonna work on the aircraft bustled past Mary looking for the pilot. They even said to her, where's the pilot? And she rather angrily said, I am the pilot. But despite that, they pushed past her and actually checked in the aircraft to see if they could find the missing pilot. They could not believe that Mary Ellis had came in and landed perfectly. Such was the power and the prowess of the, of the ladies of the Air Transport Auxiliary. Due to their incredible attitude, ability and contribution, in 1943 they were actually given equal pay for equal work. Now that's something we're still struggling to get on board with today as the fight continues. It just shows you how amazing the achievement was by these ladies and they did it through the prowess and the humble actions that they took. Every day they showed up, it didn't matter what insults were thrown at them, how many people doubted them or what was said about them. They carried on regardless, they carried on moving forward and they let their actions do the talking. And that's what really inspires me, that's what we can learn from them. Also, how incredible that they were way out of their comfort zone. Like you imagine me or you learning to fly, it'd be daunting and scary. Imagine being someone who has come out of the family home for the first time in, in generations 
and they were the people learning to fly way out of their comfort zone and they absolutely excelled and led by example and they were pioneers. They led the way for other women to say, oh my God, if they can do that, then what can we do? And they did it with an underlying dignified resilience and that is what we absolutely love here at the project.